So today we will have a discussion on uh, history taking, clinical examination and management of epigastric mass. As you know, like it's an important clinical topic and uh, it's the exam case for undergraduates as well as for postgraduates. So what do you mean by the epigastric region? So it's the area of the abdomen which is bound by the transpyloric plane inferiorly and on either side by the clavicular lines. Fine. So in this you'll have different planes, right? You'll have paritis, intraperitoneal and retroperitoneal structures. Yes, sir. So these are the anatomical structures. In exam, if you see, mostly intraabdominal, intraperitoneal masses are kept for undergraduates. Whereas for postgraduate, they keep any mass in the epigastric region. Okay. So you should uh, have a thorough knowledge on clinical examination and discussion on epigastric mass. Yes. Do you have any case scenario? If you have, you can present. Yes, sir. We'll present, sir. Okay. Mrs. Kanniyamal, a 50-year-old female coming from Perumbakam, she's a housewife. She came with the chief complaints of upper abdominal pain since four months, loss of weight since two months, and loss of appetite over two months. Coming to the history of presenting illness, she was apparently normal until four months ago when she developed upper abdominal pain, which is insidious in onset, non-progressive, located in the epigastric region, dull aching, continuous, non-radiating, there are no specific aggravating or relieving factors and it is not associated with food intake. So, the upper abdominal pain of four months, what all did you think of? In a 50-year-old female, what all did you think of? So, first, uh, my uh, differential diagnosis would have been maybe a gastric or duodenal ulcer, so peptic ulcer disease. Okay. Second, maybe uh, chronic pancreatitis. So. You won't think of acute problem because the duration is four months. Yes. So, gastritis and other things is unlikely. So, as you rightly said, you have to think of a chronic problem, right? So, four months, what you thought of acid peptic disease, you need donor ulcer, gastric ulcer is okay. And uh, what is the relationship with food? Why did you ask that? Not associated with food intake. So, to identify whether it is a peptic ulcer disease, sir. Okay, what happens in gastric ulcer? So, in gastric ulcer, uh, on food intake, the pain is worsened, whereas in duodenal ulcer, with food intake, the pain reduces. Correct. So, normally, after food intake, immediately if the pain occurs, it means it's a gastric ulcer, right? Yes. So, food aggravates pain in gastric ulcer, whereas food relieves pain in duodenal mm -hmm. ulcer. So, that you should be very clear, right? Now, you said there is loss of weight, right? Yes, sir. Two kilos in two months. And yes, it is unintentional. Yes. Sir. So now having thought, I mean, having taken this history, so what all you thought of? Sir, uh, loss of weight is usually a constitutional symptom. Given her age being 50 years, uh, I have the suspicion of some form of malignancy at the back of my mind. So. Correct. And you said it is unintentional, right? Yes, sir. So obviously you have to think in terms of malignancy. Right? Because if it is due to food pain, she would avoid it food. Yes, sir. Then in that case, we'll think probably nutritional. Yes, she is scared to take food uh, because it can aggravate pain. So it becomes uh, intentional, right? Yes, so you have clearly meant it, in, it is unintentional loss, right? Yes. Fine. Sir. Then? Uh, loss of appetite is also present over the past two months, sir. She is unable to take food because of the pain. Pain. Okay. And early satiety is also present, right? Yes, sir. So, what all these three symptoms take us to like? So, there are classical symptoms seen in carcinoma of stomach, sir. So, mostly it's a malignancy, right? So, mostly yes. malignancy, you'll have all these symptoms. Okay. Yes. Right. So, pain will be a symptom in malignancy at what stage? Usually in advanced disease, sir. Mostly it's advanced disease. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Coming to the negative history, sir, there is no history of vomiting, no history of hematemesis or melina, ball rolling movements, constipation, dysphagia, abdominal distension, jaundice, cough, breathlessness or hemoptysis or back pain. Okay, now you explain me why you ask all these things, why vomiting is important. So, vomiting could be an indicator whether there is any um, outlet obstruction in the stomach, sir. Right. Then.